This is a face of regret. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And while I'm gonna let 5 a.m. me tell you a little bit more about why I decided to do this experiment, uh, frankly, because 5 a.m. me was not happy. I did want to tell you a little bit more about the parameters of this experiment. So I started on Friday, January 1st, and I did it every weekday for two weeks. In the wrap up, I'll actually talk about how this affected my weekends as well. But yes, I hosted three 5 a.m. or 5 10 a.m. live streams, two to mark the first week and then the second week, and one to mark the very end of the experiment. And I noticed some interesting things about those live write-ins compared to other live write-ins, which again I will talk about at the end. So that's basically all you need to know. This of course is not an original concept. 5 a.m. me will talk a little bit about that. I've seen it all over Twitter. I have no idea who originated 5 a.m. Writers Club. I, it could have been started freaking before Twitter even existed, you know, as the ideology is just to make writing sort of the forefront, the most important thing, and you're building time into your schedule. Hi Zelda. And you're building time into your schedule to write. So it's like you're forcing the time in rather than just allowing it to present itself naturally in your routine. I also want to say that this video is being sponsored by Skillshare. I'm really excited about one of the classes I've been taking. It's all about essay writing, which I've done a lot of in this video, but, oh, I have hair on it. Oh, no. I found out that the Roxanne Gay is teaching a class about writing essays. So anyways, I've been taking that. I'll talk about Skillshare later. Yeah. So without further ado, let me take you back to 5 a.m. Kate on January 1st, who thought that she had made a mistake. Good morning. It is time for 5 a.m. Writers Club. As we're waiting for uh, just to count down, you know what, actually. We'll open the coffee and I can tell you a little bit about why I'm doing this sort of experiment. So I've heard a lot about 5 a.m. Writers Club. I had seen it a lot over on Twitter actually ages ago and then when I went to the Wander Writers Retreat I think several of the girls there had been talking about it. Several of them actually got up to do it. I know Brooke Passmore has hosted 5 a.m. Writers stuff. <sighs> This is a face of regret. <laughs> Personally, I didn't get the hype. I'm going into this skeptical, okay? I already wake up at like 6.30 or so. Hi, Zelda. <sighs> and so I didn't see why I should get up any earlier. Like I'm already a morning person. I just don't know how much it could help me. So Sierra and Whitfield though convinced me that I should give this a try. And I'm hoping that really what it does is that it just adds to my morning time, my good time, my like good brain time. Clearly it's not good brain time. Yeah, let's take a sip of this before we go live. All right, and we're gonna do what Jessica taught us. Brand, countdown, go live. Yeah, woo, Zelda, calm down. This 5 a.m. thing is incredible. So far, amazing. Amazing. If the rest of the week, the two weeks is like this, where are my dogs? Okay. The rest of the two weeks is like this, I might just do it all the time. Because I finally figured out the ending to a piece that I had been struggling over, so I added 595 words. I think I'm gonna switch over to getting out the Millwardy newsletter, of which I've only sent two, but this would be my third. And draft that during this time, and then I think, who knows, who knows? And it'll only be like seven by the time I'm done, and I'll have gotten probably over a thousand words. What a good Zelda. What a good Zelda. Yeah. Yes, sir, puppy dog. Yes, sir. Come on in, Bubs. Were you waiting for him? That's so nice of you, Zelda. We finished. We finished. I always love all of the love we have at the end. I love love. It has been two hours, and it's only 7.14 a.m., heck yes. We're gonna X out of Chrome. I managed to get 842 words total. I have the Millwordy newsletter up. I'm going to try and format that and send it out, but first, it was freaking time for food. I'm hungry. 
Uh, I was impressed with the stream. We managed not to talk about food for the first hour and 50 minutes, so it's truly progress works. I also finished water. Oh my goodness, I almost stepped on my dog. Oh no! All right, schedule, send. <laughs> it's 8.42 and I just got the newsletter sent out, which is exciting because I've been meaning to send one for a while. I think it looks pretty good. I'm pumped. That was a whole 245 words in that newsletter. Felt it. What are you doing? I also got my schedule for my writing sprints up, um, which is nice. Y'all, I think I'm doing really good. I can't believe, I feel like I got a lot done. It's not even 9 a.m. <laughs> really dark, I hear you. And with a whole 840 words so far for the morning, I think I'm going to take a reading break. And I will just update y'all at the end of the day with um, my energy levels throughout the day and how much work I managed to get done and when. Yeah, okay. So the most interesting thing that I discovered during this first week was that if I could get up at five, then I would be able to work almost as if I was timing myself and doing my forest trackers without having to actually do them. My focus was genuinely just so much better and I felt more accomplished. Like before the sun was up, I had done so many things and that kind of I don't know, empowered me. There was a sense of momentum, I guess. I'd done all this stuff, I could continue doing all of this stuff, and that's one of my big things that I love so much from this already. It's just that feeling of accomplishment by like freaking 9.30, you know? In 9.30, my brain still doesn't think it's anywhere close to midday, which if I was getting up to work and started at seven, would be kind of close to like an 11.30 lunch, you know? But no, I'm like, oh no, I still have an hour and a half of good work to keep going and keep like propelling forward on. It feels a lot more like a mental hack than I realized it was going to at the beginning of this. And I'm excited to show you what week two looks like. But before that, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. They have sponsored me several times before and I genuinely love it as a creator because I just get to do the videos I was already gonna do and then get to talk about a fun class that I've taken. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. So far, I've used it to like gain new skills or kind of learn adjacent skills that would help me. There's a lot of writing specific classes that I think I would love that I've personally added to my to my classes. The list is very long, let me tell you. It's starting to get a little bit embarrassing at this point, but it's fine. From Matt Belossi, they have going viral, write, film, and make content people share. I've talked to a couple people about making a podcast or how that processing goes. I've talked about doing one with my brother before. So I've been taking John Lago Marcino's class, how to make a podcast, plan, record, and launch with success. And then of course, the one I really want to talk with you all about today, which is Roxanne Gay's class, creative writing, craft personal essays with impact. I gushed last time about the transcript options they have, but I just want to show you how cool it is so you can be playing the video and following along with the transcript. It even highlights the portion that the creator is currently talking about at the time. But the thing that I've really enjoyed about Roxanne Gay's class besides just Roxanne Gay in general is I liked her perspective on revising not being rewriting but more so re-seeing your work which I thought was an again I guess because 5 a.m is kind of like a mental hack I'm doing this feels like a nice mental reset for me on what revising is like she says that if you're you know rewriting your draft if you're on draft nine that's probably too many drafts you're probably seeking perfection and as this is something I've struggled with before I was like Roxanne. <laughs> okay. I also really like, um, it's actually the last sort of portion of her about an hour class and she's talking about getting your essays published. If you find an essay that you've read and you've loved, looking up where that person has been published before and trying to submit to those places. She also lists though like concrete options, websites that you can find that will talk about submissions, that will tell you how often they'll get back to you, at what kind of rate they'll get back to you. So just overall, I loved it so much. I've also learned so much from the classes I'm taking. I even have ones about like making nail art and creating a signature cocktail added to my class list. 
So I'm just learning a lot, which is the entire point of Skillshare. It's specifically curated for learning, so there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's also less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, but for the first thousand of you who click my link, I'll leave it in the description down below. You will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. And thank you so much to Skillshare for once again sponsoring this video. So now I just want to take you into the second week of the experiment. It should be noted, um, I'll share my word count with you um, at the end of it, but it, the second week was considerably better than the first week. Uh, also, don't judge me for wearing the exact same thing, okay? We're all at home now all the time. All right, okay, yeah. All right, it is 7.11 a.m. on Friday, January 8th. We just finished <laughs> the uh, 5 a.m. stream. And I figured I'd sum up how I'm feeling because we kind of talked about it on the stream, but I'm really enjoying the 5 a.m. Just the stream sprint sessions are my most productive stream sprint sessions. Like, I managed to get 840 words edited and I got almost nine minutes of this video edited. And actually, I don't know if y'all can see, there's not many more clips to go through. So basically I'll already have one round of edits on this video, which is, that's incredible for two hours and just like chatting and talking. I really, I really enjoy them and it helps me wake up more than if I was doing it alone. So there's some kind of magic in that. The days that I can get up at 5 a.m., I freaking love this routine. I think what I'm gonna do is I was in bed yesterday at like 8.20 and I think I probably fell asleep finally at nine or so after journaling and scrolling just like a little bit, which is good. Um, I think I just need to be in bed each night at eight, honestly. That way, if I get to bed at nine, I'll still have like a solid amount of sleep. But it is hard when um, like the past two days, I haven't been able to get up at 5 a.m. even though my alarm's gotten off because I have really bad allergies one of the days. And then the other day, January 6th, the freaking domestic terrorists were, you know, infiltrating the Capitol, but also just the news cycle surrounding that, the doom scrolling that followed that, it's just, yeah, it was really tough to get to sleep and then wake up at um, 5 a.m. on January 7th. I, that was one of the few times I actually woke up and I didn't fall back asleep. I just literally couldn't get out of bed. I was not, not even doom scrolling. It was just like cycling through my head, right? So I either need to implement, like I was saying, going to bed, or being in bed at eight, or I need to get comfortable taking naps midday. I think basically what I'm doing is I'm getting a bonus hour and a half of work. I think that's what it is. But I also think my like midday sleepiness is at uh, an all time high. So I already naturally get kind of sleepy around two ish, which is why I actually time my Twitch streams then so that I like persevere. But doing this 5 a.m. thing, it's actually the Twitch streams have been tougher to like I think focus and stay awake for, so hmm, just things to think about. But time to finish this if we can. I don't know if you can see one of my dogs waddling outside. <laughs> this little buddy is right here with me, like always. All right, as you can see, this is exactly what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> I'm totally done with the first edit at 15 minutes and 22 seconds. I had to film a little bit to put it in there um, to wrap it up, but uh, um, I will do the other edit later today, but I think for now I need a little bit of a break. Maybe food <laughs> or more coffee. <laughs> I've been doing all my Sudoku stuff. It has felt better sometimes than scrolling Reddit endlessly. One fifty. I'm very sleepy right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, and that is it for my five a.m. experiment. I'm saying that is it. Okay, because I'm gonna keep doing it. 
For the rest of January, I'm gonna keep doing it. But like I mentioned during the second week, what I realized is I cannot do the 2 p.m. Twitch stream. So I'm actually today gonna go and change that to be 10 a.m. So I'll get up at 5 a.m. right until 10 a.m. where I will host a live stream. And then I'm still thinking of doing a 5 a.m. live stream specifically and kind of comparing and contrasting. So this is going to be a longer experiment potentially. Um, it's more just like an evolution, I guess. But I loved it. I will say, yeah, the worst part was still that 2 p.m. time frame. I actually took a picture of myself. I'll see if I can flash it on the screen. It was just before one of the Twitch streams I was hosting where I actually laid down and I knew I was gonna nap because I was so tired. Actually, the 20 minute nap, amazing. It works so well. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with my sleep schedule. I might just start napping at two and have like a two to 2.30 or two to three nap time midday. And that would be great, you know? that be awesome. But I did promise that I would share the stats for week one versus week two. Again, I really don't know whether it was the 5 a.m. thing and getting used to it or what. But the first week in total, I got 6,234 words. The second week I got at least 23,508. So it's quite a bit of difference. Part of that is just in the way I'm counting, I've gotten toward the end on a couple projects that require multiple rereads. And so that kind of racks up the words in a quicker way. But it's also just that I really was, I think more productive that second week once I'd gotten used to it. So who knows? I think the biggest point is as someone who was genuinely skeptical about it, I have a total change of heart on how I feel about it. That being said, I still don't know that it would be great for nighttime writers. I don't even think it would be great for afternoon writers. I think the key for me is that my morning brain has always been my best brain. This has been true since I was like a child. I love me some sleep and I love going to bed early and I love getting up early and doing all my stuff. So getting up just a little bit earlier was amazing. I don't think I could do like a 4.30 kind of thing. That would just feel too early. Maybe someday down the line, I'll try that experiment comparing, but that still kind of feels like night to me, whereas five in my head is perfectly normal morning time. So I just, I loved it. Did not think that's what I was gonna say at the beginning of this, but I loved it. So please do comment down below. Let me know if you are a morning, afternoon, or sort of nighttime writer. I'm trying to think of a way that a nighttime writer could implement the same kind of thing. And I almost think, I guess you'd just stay up a little bit later. That doesn't seem to be an equivalent in my mind, but again, I'm not a nighttime writer, so I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you've tried the 5 a.m. Writers Club experiment before. Several people told me there were other author tubers also doing 5 a.m. Writers Club, I think because January 1st and we were all like, why the heck not? Let's do this. I know Zara Hoffman has started her own version of 5 a.m. Writers Club so that she can, you know, sort of test out the system herself. So let me know if you plan to try this out. As far as the experiments I've done in the past, this is certainly the easiest sort of lifestyle change and that I changed nothing else. I just got up an hour and a half earlier. <laughs> Please do also let me know if there's any kind of writing experiments that you've been wanting to try or that you want me to try on your behalf. If you do not want to do the terrible thing, you know I'm always down to attempt it at least once <laughs> or twice or three times because I can't learn my lesson. It's fine. 24 hour writathon lucky. <laughs> But that is gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to everyone who told me to attempt the 5 a.m. Writers Club. And thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. The Cinephiliac, Mariah Geiger, Kara Shank, Kate Wetton, and Michaela Stone. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. And I will just up y'all at the... You will get a free trial. Oh, trial. Okay, that's time. I am just randomly uh, getting fake typing content so I can intermix it, oh no. I was trying to see if I could get Zelda in here too.